Okay, so let's prove that this language is not regular. So here it's all strings of the form zero to the n, one to the m, where n is not equal to m. So this is a very challenging language, but I'm gonna show you a really nice trick that I've done on the channel already, but I'm gonna do it again here. So let's again, suppose that this thing is uh, regular. So suppose L were regular, then what we know is that there exists a pumping constant P, exists a P for L. Okay, so then uh, now what we need to do is we need to pick a string that is in the language and length at least P. So you may pick, okay, choose W equal to zero to the P plus one, one to the P. And that's actually pretty reasonable. It's a reasonably good choice because it's length at least P, the two exponents are not the same, so we're good to go then. It turns out that this won't work. Um, because if I put more zeros in to the left side, then I'm toast, right? Because I'm gonna have more zeros and I'm trying to get out of the language, meaning that we have exactly the same number of zeros, uh, sorry, the same number of zeros and ones. But if I put more in, then I'm gonna still have more zeros and ones and that's not good. Um, if I try to uh, pump down because I wanna have these two be the same, then I could subtract one from here, but I got to look at all decompositions and I might not be able to get exactly one. I might overshoot the mark and then now they're still not equal and I haven't left the language. So we're going to use something that I've done on the channel and you could search for it, but I'm going to show you it again here called the P factorial trick. It's very tricky. <laughs> and I did it in orange because of Halloween, obviously. But so this string will not help us. Instead, let's pick this string. Zero to the P, one to the P plus P factorial. And you may think, how? How did you come up with that? So uh, I'll give my reasons at the end, but the basic idea is, remember when we tried to pump down here and we couldn't get nailed down exactly one? Well here, it could, the number of things we take away could be anything from one up to P. So I don't know what that is, what number it actually is. It's some number between one and P. So let's just do something that if we added it over and over and over and over, regardless of whether it's one, two, three, up to P, whatever it is, we will eventually hit the same target, which is P factorial. And why P factorial is because it's equal to one times two times three times blah, 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 up to P. So if I pick five, if it happened to be five, for example, then, um, and let's say P was 10. So the number of characters I'm adding or deleting is five and P is 10. Well, 10 factorial divides P or five divides 10 factorial. And so if I add five over and over and over, I'm eventually gonna get there. An open question is whether or not you can do better than this, but this is, um, this is totally fine for our purposes. So we gotta look at all decompositions uh, of W into X, Y, and Z, according to the rules, where X, Y has length at most P and Y has at least one character. Well, we know that the first uh, P characters are zeros, so we know that X and Y are only zeros. So here we know that X is gonna be some number of zeros, let's call it alpha. Y is gonna be some number of zeros, call it beta. And we know that since Y is not empty, beta is at least one. And Z is the whole rest of the string. So we got P minus alpha minus beta, one to the p plus p factorial still there okay so then now we want to see uh when is this thing in the language and we want to pick an i for which it's not in the language because we want to contradict what the pumping limit says so we want to choose an i such that x y to the i z is not in l okay but we better figure out when it is in the language so that we can 
Uh, figure it out later. Okay, so what is x, y to the i of c? Well, let's just copy down the pieces. So we have 0 to the alpha, 0 to the i beta, 0 to the p minus alpha minus beta, 1 to the p plus p factorial. And let's collapse the zeros again. So we have 0 to the p minus, so the alphas get killed off, I should say, p plus i beta minus beta, 1 to the p plus p factorial. So what we can show here that, oops, that this thing is in the language if and only if um, these, uh, these two numbers are different. It's in the language if and only if they are different because that's what the language is defined to be. So p plus i beta minus beta is not equal to p plus p factorial. So if and only if, well, we can subtract the p on both sides is equivalent. So i beta minus, minus beta is not equal to p factorial. So let's factor the, the left side. So beta i minus one is not equal to p factorial. Well, since we, we got to uh, make an assumption. So since uh, one is less than beta, so beta is at least one, that's the condition, but it's also at most p because the first two pieces are of length at most p. Well, the second piece therefore is at most length p. So uh, that implies that beta divides p factorial. So the, if you haven't seen this notation before, this means that b is a divisor of this. So we can divide by beta on both sides, and I have an integer on both sides. So if and only if i is not equal to p factorial over beta plus 1. So as long as i is not equal to this specific number, then we're in the language. So let's pick that number to get out of the language. So let's choose i to be p factorial over beta plus one. And that's it. <laughs> and if you substitute it back in, then we're gonna have the same number of zeros and ones. So a very complicated route to a problem that's very, very similar to a different one, which is way easier, which shows that Getting two numbers to be equal is way harder than getting two numbers to not be equal. Because there are a lot more numbers that are not equal to something than, than there are equal. Cool. So we have shown that 0 to the n, 1 to the m, where the two exponents are different, is not regular.